In this lesson, moving forward, I'm going to talk about the IP version 4 protocol. And I'll also demonstrate how this is actually used and the difference between IP version 4. And then I'll also cover IP version 6 in the next lesson. But here, just focusing on what IPv4 is all about. So what is IP version 4? It's simply the Internet Protocol version 4 is the fourth version of the IP or the Internet Protocol and the first version to be widely deployed. Even today, 99% of the networks being deployed, they use the IPv4 version. It's a frequently used communications protocol and is one of the core protocols for the Internet. And importantly, IP resides on the network layer of the OSI model. Here are the IP addresses. Each computer, for example, on the network has to have a unique IP address. And we talked about that in previous lesson. It has to be unique, just like the home address within the subdivision that you live in. For example, your house has a unique number. That's how your physical mail gets delivered to you. So the IP addresses, they consist of four octets, eight bits, each between 0 and 255. So for example, we have an IP address of 12.5.24.2. We also may have an IP address of 127.0.0.1. This is also known as the loop back address. And then of course, other ranges are also available. So in order for an IP address to function properly, there must be properly configured IP addresses and compatible subnet masks. Two different kinds. One is the static and the other one is the dynamic IP addresses. Static IP addresses are simply that are manually assigned to a computer or a host or a device. And the dynamic IP addresses are common than static IP addresses where they are automatically being obtained or in other words the computer automatically obtains an IP address from your server or from another device so let's say you're running 10 computers on the network for example and one server in a client server model every time you turn your computer on the server would assign an IP address to your computer and that's how you would be able to connect to the server and transfer information Another important concept is default gateway and DNS server. For a device to communicate on the internet, a default gateway and DNS server must be assigned. So for example, think of default gateway as your main gate outside your house, right? So everything happening within your own environment. You have five different rooms in your house and you have computers in those rooms. They're all connected together. But if someone needs to connect to the outside world or across the street or to another city, town, for example, you'd have to use the default gateway. And think of, again, as of the main gate of your home. The default gateway provides a default route for TCP IP hosts to use when communicating with hosts on remote networks. So now you're connected to someone else outside your own environment. The first IP address of the device that a client computer will look for when attempting to gain access outside the local network. The DNS server, on the other hand, is the server that provides name resolution of domain names to IP addresses. So for instance, you're browsing the internet and you go to Microsoft.com, for example. Well, that's, that's text, right? That's not an IP address. It's very difficult to remember IP addresses because there are millions and millions of computer networks and hosts within each network. So the easiest way is to use English terminology or names. So we remember Microsoft.com, for example, Google.com, and so on. But in fact, behind the scenes, they all have an IP address. So the DNS server's job is to resolve that name. So it masks the IP address, so to speak. So you see Microsoft.com, but Behind the scene is actually an IP address which the server has assigned accordingly. 
Here's the classful network architecture. The IPv4 classification system is known as the classful network architecture and is broken down typically into five sections class A, B, and C, and of course, there are D and E as well. But primarily, we're concerned with the first three classes. So, in class of IP address, for example, or class A, the first octet is the network portion. And we talked about that, we covered that in the previous lesson. But just a nice chart that kind of gives you the various classes, the IP range, for example, the default subnet mask to be used, the network ID versus the host ID, possible networks, and then usable addresses. So loopback testing. I mentioned the IP address 127.0.0.1, for example. This is also known as the loopback testing, just to make sure that your computer is connected or has an IP address. So the range for class A is 0 to 127. The 127 network number is not used by hosts as a logical IP address. Instead, this network is used for loopback IP addresses, allowing for testing. So the important thing to remember is that the IP address of 127.0.0.1 is reserved for loopback testing. Next, let me in fact demo some of these IP addresses so you can actually see everything in action also. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my network connections on my computer and I'll show you the various networks. So here are all the different network connections. I've simply opened up my network connections on my Windows computer and you'll notice there are several of them. For instance, the one that I'm actively connected to the internet, for example, is the Wi-Fi or the wireless connectivity. I also have the physical Ethernet, for example, network cable, which is unplugged because I'm not plugged in physically to a network. Therefore, it says network cable unplugged. That's my Ethernet, right? My local area network. And then, of course, my virtual box, which is the host only network. I also have a virtual machine running, which also runs on only on Ethernet adapter. So if I were to right click, for example, the virtual box host network and then click on properties. This opens up the host only network properties. Let me bring that in the center. And if I were to scroll down, notice here's the IP version 4 or the TCP IP version 4. So as I select this and click on properties, it brings up my internet protocol version 4 properties. And here's the IP address. So 192.168.56.1 is being assigned to the virtual box or this connection with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and we know from the rules that this is a class C network. Here's the DNS so if there was a DNS server the IP address for the DNS server would have been listed as well. So just to give you an idea that you can take a look at your network connections, right click, go to properties, and then evaluate and just observe various IP addresses being assigned. If I were to test this IP address, whether the connection is good or not, I need to run the ping command. And I'll get into the TCP IP commands, the basic and the advanced in subsequent lessons. But you can always test this as well. So let's cancel this one and let's take a look at the Wi-Fi, the wireless connectivity connection. So if I were to right click, for example, go to properties of the Wi-Fi connection, bring this in the center and scroll down, simply highlight the TCP IP version 4, click on properties. And in this instance, notice it says obtain an IP address automatically. So here, the IP address is being automatically assigned to my computer from the actual host or the server that is outside my network. Similarly, it's going to obtain the DNS server address automatically as well. So once again, you can either manually assign IP addresses or you can set it up to be obtained automatically. So let's go ahead and switch back to our slides. Perfect. So in this lesson, we talked about 
the concept of IP version 4 protocol, the IP addresses one more time, and then how to go about on your own computer, take a look at various network connections and observe the static IP address versus the dynamic IP addresses as well. So I hope this helps practice and let's move to the next lesson.